here, it still feels surreal to me. I think it's gonna take me a couple of days to actually soak everything in and be like, okay, I'm in the place that I've always wanted to be. My goal has always been to combine my creative aesthetic style of street photography with a visual storytelling approach. I can honestly say that I am fascinated by the life of others. Photography is a form of self-expression. We go out and we search for the type of content that means something to us. I feel like I'm always inspired by everything around me. The sounds, smells, noises, even the vibrancy of Cuba. I'm really happy that we're actually walking the streets of Cuba at night. I'm just in awe with everything that I'm seeing. It's like literally taking my breath away. And this is only our first night here and I just can't wait to see and to experience the rest of our trip. Being born and raised in the States, when you first hear Cuba, you don't really know what to expect. You hear oppression, you think about Elian Gonzalez. There's a lot of different key notes that hit Cuba, specifically with Americans. So you have this perception that it's dangerous, that it's hostile, but at the same time, it's very mysterious. I feel like it's probably one of the most important places to visit in the entire world because the level of cultural shock that you experience is out of this world. When I first used to think of Cuba, I used to think of it as being borderline mysterious, and now I want to buy a house here. The reason why I love street photography is it's personable, it's intimate, it's transparent. Those are all the aspects of my life that I want to work on every single day. Cuba is a perfect example of what street photography can mean for somebody who really takes it seriously. Being here in Cuba and seeing building structures and cars, everything looks amazing as I expected, but it's even beyond that. Photography for me is experimental and I love portraits and I like it to be on the darker side and I like to play around with the tones too. Photography is an escape and, uh, and it's become a passion of myself. Getting to have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a lot of these different photographers has humanized it for me and it's so cool to just meet the person behind the lens. I get distracted really easily, but out here the only distractions are like the ambient noises from outside because there's no Wi-Fi. So I think that allows you to focus more on the simple things in life, which I love. I shoot to tell a story. I shoot to find details that people are probably overlooking. So I'm usually really low to the ground, really close to people's faces, and I break those boundaries because I'm not scared. The worst that could happen is I could get punched in the face. To get to evoke those emotions, to make people feel something after watching like a film, I, that's my goal. I am a YouTuber, so I post to YouTube almost every single day. And so while I'm not here, I have a really cool opportunity to just document anything and everything. And hopefully I can capture Cuba in a different light. There's so much content out here and so much to highlight and to really dive into different culture that I am so unaware of and I'm really looking forward to see how everyone captures Cuba differently. Cuba is a place that I've always wanted to visit. I think as Americans, it's always seemed like a place that was, you know, off limits to us. I understand a little bit about the geopolitics of all of that, you know, the history with the Cold War and everything but Cuba has always been a mystery to me. My style of photography is a lot of portraiture, it's a lot of street photography, candid moments. And to narrow it down a little bit, I really like this feeling of noir, or like this old school kind of lost world style. And going with amazing artists, it's a dream come true. Today, the United States of America is changing its relationship with the people of Cuba. We will end an outdated approach that for decades has failed to advance our interests, and instead, we will begin to normalize relations between our two countries. Through these changes, we intend to create more opportunities for the American and Cuban people. Like immigrants before, Cubans helped remake America, even as they felt a painful yearning for the land and families they left behind. All of this bound America and Cuba in a unique relationship, at once family and foe. 
I've instructed to immediately begin discussions with Cuba to reestablish diplomatic relations that have been severed since January of 1961. After all, these 50 years have shown that isolation has not worked. It's time for a new approach. Nobody represents America's values better than the American people. And I believe this contact will ultimately do more to empower the Cuban people. Today, America chooses to cut loose the shackles of the past so as to reach for a better future for the Cuban people, for the American people, for our entire hemisphere, and for the world. In the next episode of Through the Lens, Cuba. I can't really tell you what my favorite part of the day was, but I will always remember Panchito. I cannot deny that man's hospitality and that man's coffee. My style of street photography, I always go for this kind of nostalgic vibe. Down here, everywhere you turn, it's like shooting in 1960s New York. If she didn't have that physical photo album, we probably wouldn't have had a good idea of who she was. I remember seeing the living conditions. They don't have anything. Being here in Cuba is allowing us to be more appreciative of what we have.